Hey y'all, hi. Today, I am finally going to tell you all about my experience with the brand Ellis Foss. It's a makeup brand that I have pretty much never heard anybody talk about on YouTube, and I've almost never heard anybody mention. I I just stumbled across it randomly a really long time ago, and I was totally sucked in and intrigued. And it's pretty expensive. So I had to wait until there was a month when I had a lot, like a big chunk of my budget for review videos that I wasn't using for anything else. That happened recently. It was like the end of December, beginning of January. I dedicated a a large chunk of my budget for a review to a single order from Ellis Foss, and I've been using the product ever since. So I'm gonna be telling you what I have tried, telling you about my experience discovering the brand, and then my experience ordering from the brand, and then my experience starting to use the products, and my experience using the products over time. I have like the whole thing for you. And I definitely have some pretty well-developed thoughts at this point because I've given these products a lot of time in my collection and in my life to show me what they're made of. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. My name's Hannah. I love beautiful things. I love makeup. I particularly love natural makeup, meaning like skin that looks like skin, skin that looks fresh and healthy. And I also particularly love super striking editorial makeup, weird stuff, different textures, really dramatic colors and sort of smoky, smudgy, sooty, grungy things. And this brand is curiously a perfect wedding, at least it seems to be. The aesthetic of the brand is a perfect wedding of those two loves of mine. And that is why I was so excited to test out this brand and I'm so excited to let you know how it has gone. If you enjoy this while you're watching and you're new and you're not subscribed, I hope you will remember to subscribe before you go. Now, let's get right into the meat of the video. So it's going to be a little bit of a story time structure to the video, meaning I'm going to tell you about my experience with the brand. So I'm going to be narrating kind of like a subjective review. I guess all reviews are subjective to a point, but you know what I'm saying. It will be a little bit narrative. There will be facts. I will be giving you the facts, but it's not going to be one of these line them up, knock them out kinds of videos. However, I'll timestamp below. So if you're just interested in hearing about a particular product or if you're just interested in like a particular part of the story of my experience, you should be able to skip through the video and just watch the parts that you wanna watch. I also have really good overhead footage of swatches of all of the products that I tested. I'll try to remember to figure out how to timestamp those as well. So if you just wanna see the swatches, you can skip straight to the swatches. I think I first heard about Ellis Foss in a comment. I think one of you, and you might be watching, you might know who you are, One of you years ago commented on one of my videos that I might like Ellis Foss because I was talking about liking natural colors. I think I was actually talking in that video about liking makeup that is a color that is found in actual human skin. So obviously, human skin comes in a wide variety of colors. And even on a single person, there are hundreds of shades of color. And I was saying that to me in makeup, there's a distinction, a line between colors that are part of the palette of the human body and colors that are not, like really, really bright cerulean blue, for example, most greens. They're natural in that they can be found in the natural world, but they aren't found in or on the human body. And in that video, I think I was waxing poetic about my appreciation for human colors. And then one of you said, you should look at Ellis Foss because the entire makeup brand is founded on this principle of human colors. And that is cool. And it's one of the things that's cool about the brand and that I've appreciated as I've gotten to know the brand. But as soon as I started looking into the brand, absorbing the imagery, navigating the website, I forgot even about that. I didn't, like how cool that is, paled in comparison to just the spectacle of Ellis Foss, her work, her vision, the products that she's created, the colors, y'all, the colors, the colors, the colors, and the finishes, and the mechanisms for applying the product, 
all of it spoke to me so vigorously. And I was like, did I dream this? Like, was this plucked directly from my dreams? But as I said, very expensive. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the Ellis Foss website, started putting things into my cart for review, mind you. So I'm not even thinking about like how much of my own money it's adding up to. I'm thinking about reviewing the brand. So started putting things into my cart for review and the lip products come in four finishes. I always felt like if I was going to review it, I would have to pick at least three of the four. Like I would have to do some kind of comprehensive review of the finishes because it's like a big thing, the four finishes of the lip products. It seems like that's the heart of the brand. But then the skin, like the, the complexion products look so beautiful. The textures, even the lightest shade of the complexion products looks like it could work for me, which is really rare. And then the blushes, like they have these beautiful liquid blushes that also come in the same kind of packaging. And so I would go in and I would put in one of each of the lip products. And then I would be like, but I have to include a blush and I have to include the concealer. And then all of a sudden my cart would be like over $200. And I was like, I just can't hack it right now. This happened to me probably 10 times. <laughs> like there was so many times I was trying to figure out how to make it work and couldn't make it work. There was nothing for it but to really save up my budget and wait. As I said in the introduction, that's what I did. And I, I finally pulled the trigger and here we are. So here are the five products that I ordered. I got the concealer in the lightest shade. I got the blush in the lightest shade. So two skin products. And then I got one of each of three of the four Ellis Foss lip formulas. So the four formulas that Ellis Foss created are creamy lips, milky lips, glazed lips, and hot lips. Creamy Lips is the closest to a traditional lipstick. It's pretty, pretty high coverage, pretty pigmented. Milky Lips is like a medium pigment product that's not a gloss. And that's the one that intrigued me the most because my favorite, or one of my favorite lip products of all time has been the Glossier Vanillic Lip, which is now long discontinued. And it came in a dispenser like this, a twist up tube with a sponge tip applicator. And it was like a semi-pigmented lip product that wasn't really very glossy and was like super easy to apply. And I, I loved the way that it looked on the lips, but I also really loved the mechanism. So I was excited. I've been searching since it was discontinued for something that could kind of stand in for the glossy vanillic lip in my life. And I had pinned some hopes on this product. So creamy lips is the traditional lipstick. Milky lips is the middle, middle ground pigment. Glazed lips is the gloss. And then a hot lips is a really, really high pigment like I think that it's Ellis Foss's equivalent of a liquid lipstick, although it is not supposed to dry down completely in the way that a traditional like peeling setting liquid lipstick does. That's the one that I didn't try. And it's mostly because the colors are much, much brighter. In hot lips, creamy lips, milky lips, and glazed lips all have the most beautiful shade ranges of lip product that I've ever seen, I think. I, I mean, maybe the Gucci. I love the shade ranges of the Gucci lip product, but these are, they couldn't be more beautiful. And it was so, so difficult to decide which color to get in each product. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I did. Actually, before we move into the swatch footage, let me just briefly tell you what I know about Ellis Foss, which isn't actually that much. I went to the website this morning to prepare for this video, and I was delighted to see that it's been revamped even since I ordered these products a month or two ago. When I did order these product products, the website was really slow. It was like <laughs> infuriatingly slow. And one of the things that I was going to talk about in the review is how frustrating the website was. And like, it seems like it was long overdue for some maintenance, but they have done that maintenance. All of the stunning imagery is still being used, which I'm happy to see because the imagery was so gorgeous, but the site moved really slowly. And now it's, easier to navigate and it moves quickly just like a normal website and it's absolutely beautiful. But in addition to all of the new organization on the website, they've posted some information about Ellis Foss, who it turns out passed away in the year 2020. I thought that she was still living and working. And indeed, when I first discovered this brand, I think she was still living. But it says that, and there's a quote from her right on the front page, makeup is like poetry. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It has to feel beautiful. And um, the, the years of her life, 19, 1962, 
to 2020. So clearly the brand is continuing on, even though she's no longer living. You can read about her on the website. She apparently didn't like being in the spotlight. There aren't very many interviews about her. She didn't do very much in front of the camera, but she was a complete and total icon behind the camera, preparing models for photo shoots and doing makeup in the world of high fashion. And as far as I can tell, one of the things that the makeup brand is very famous for, if not the thing that it's the most famous for, is a shade of red that she invented or that she put into production and called Ellis Red. Sorry, just getting text, just getting text over here. Anyway, Ellis Red is offered in, I think, all of the formulas. And part of my agonies all of, on all of those occasions when I was trying to figure out which products to pick for a review, part of my agonizing was around which formula to pick for Ellis Red, like which version of Ellis Red to review, especially because there are other colors that were really calling my name. Like um, of all of the colors in each formula, Ellis Red, the really bright, strong red, was not the one that made me want to buy it because there are all of these nuanced versions of colors that we usually see in makeup in every formula. The oranges, instead of being bright and tangerine, are these kind of like ruddy, muddy oranges that you might see, I don't know, like on the inside of somebody's mouth. And whereas the red is like the famous product of this brand, I have a lot of really beautiful reds that I really love. I feel like an unbelievably stunning red isn't a thing that I struggle to find, and it isn't a thing that brands struggle to create. Not as though all of them have done it, but it isn't something that brands struggle to create. But unbelievably beautiful versions of these other colors, all the other colors, are more rare and are things that brands struggle to create. So I was always battling with myself when I was trying to figure out what to review. I was like, I have to review Ellis Red because it's like the most famous part of the brand, but I don't want to review Ellis Red. So this time I was like, I'm not putting up with it. I just picked the three color. I picked three colors that I really wanted to have and wear and use and get to know. I'm still really curious about Ellis Red. At some point in the future, I might get one but I didn't get an Ellis Red for this video. Let's look at the swatches before we get any further. The first of the products that I have to show you the footage of is the concealer. And this was actually a huge disappointment because it is way too dark and way too yellow for me. And it's much, much darker and much more yellow than it looks in the imagery. One of the things that really excited me about this brand is that the in the imagery, the color, the lightest shade of the complexion products, both the skin veil, which is the foundation, and the concealer looked like that super pale, desaturated porcelain color that really bodes well for me. Not only was this not that, but it was so far from it that I thought when I opened it that they had sent me the wrong product. And you'll see in the swatch footage that it is just a much darker, peachier, more orange color than the rose ink concealer in the lightest shade, which is a pretty decent match for me. That's what I swatched it next to so you can see the difference. There's just nothing close to a shade match for me in the complexion products from this brand. So I didn't even try it. I mean, I know that you can technically test a complexion product to see how it wears, even if it's not a good match for you. But I, I feel like that's kind of a fool's errand because I can't really see how something looks if it looks bad, if it looks fundamentally bad because the color is so wrong. So I'm just going to give that away to someone who matches it better. It does feel beautiful on the back of my hand. <laughs> That's as much as I can tell you. It's a shame, but here we are. The blush also surprised me by being much, much peachier and darker than it looks in the imagery on the website. You can see it in the swatches. I'll put up a picture of the imagery on the website. You can see what I thought that I was getting. I thought that it was going to be really, really skin-like and subtle on me, the color. And in fact, it's just a basic kind of mid-toned peach, pinky peach blush. It's a really, really close color match for Chouchette from Westman Atelier, which is a great go-to everyday blush for me, goes with almost everything, easy to wear. I reach for that a lot. I have actually found myself reaching for this blush a lot. I'll talk to you more about that when we get into the next section where I talk to you about wear and how these products have worked in my day-to-day -day life. But you can see I swatched it next to Chouchette and I also swatched it next to Glossier Dusk for comparison. It's less neutral than Dusk. 
It's not very light after all. It's not very light in color after all. And I can confidently say that if I had known that it looked like this in person, and if I had known that the concealer looked the way that it does in person, I wouldn't have gotten them. And I would have just focused on the lips. Because from the imagery on the website, I had the impression that in terms of shade, shade range, the complexion products and the blushes both had something really unusual, subtle, and special to offer me. And in reality, they don't. The formulas are fantastic. The formula of the blush, which I'll talk to you about again in a minute, it is undeniably fantastic. So I don't think that they're bad products, but there are a lot of really good products on the market. And the thing that was making this brand stand out to me when I was considering reviewing it is the colors, the combination of the colors and the formulas, but particularly the masterful artist's eye that was applied to the selection, the mixing and selection of the colors. And that didn't turn out to be as true with the complexion products as it is with the lip products. But with the lip products, it is 1000% true. They are so, so beautiful in person. So Creamy Lips, which is the one that I was hoping would be kind of like the Glossier Vanillic Lips. In that color, I got a shade called L109 Pale Coffee. And if you know my tastes, you'll be able to see why I could not resist this color. It's an incredibly pale, the color on the website looks like an incredibly pale, almost beigey brown. Again, from my dreams. And you'll be able to see in my swatch footage that it's actually much darker. It's kind of a theme here. Much darker and a little bit more orange than it looks in the imagery on the website. I wouldn't say that it disappointed me, but neither did it make me feel like all of my milk chocolate dreams were coming true as soon as I opened it. I opened it, I started swatching it, and I was like, oh, this is really beautiful. I'm going to love wearing this. But it didn't have that sort of frissant of frisson, frissant, frisson. When you say frisson, frisson in English, do you say the T? I always forget. Or do you even say frisson? in English, or is it just a French word? It didn't have, in person, it doesn't have that like crackle of excitement around it that comes from a lip product that is just like so, so to the left of what we usually see, you know? Wait a second, I've, I've been getting creamy lips and milky lips mixed up. So creamy lips is the one that comes in the sponge ship applicator, but it is the more traditional lipstick. Milky lips is the one that's supposed to be a little bit less intensely pigmented, more like the Glossier Vanillic Lip, but it comes with a brush tip applicator. I'm so sorry that I had that mixed up. I'll talk more about the formulas in the next part of the video, but back to talking about the way the colors look in real life. The shade of milky lips that I got, which is L. 207. It's called Nude Pink. Similar to Pale Coffee Creamy Lips, it's darker in real life than it looks on the website. So it looks really quite pale in the imagery on the website. And then in real life, it's again more of a mid-toned pink, peachier, just a little bit more like what I'm used to seeing in the world of makeup. And then finally, glazed lips. I could not resist this shade 305, L305. It's described as a sheer rusty orange and it is everything that I could have desired. It is so beautiful. It's such an unusual color for a lip product. It's so pretty. It works with the natural color of the lips, but it changes them and it enhances them, but in a way that's not uncomfortable. It is just, it, it's the definition of a color that is beautiful makeup, but isn't jarring at all because it works with. I gave you some swatch comparisons of lip products from my collection with these products. Underneath the glazed lips, the orange one, I swatched YSL Illicit Orange, which is the Slim Glow Matte Lipstick. It's not the same formula at all, but it's the most orangey red that I have. You can see that it's much more red than the true rusty orange of this gloss. Underneath the Milky Lips, the pink one, I swatched Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn. And they're actually surprisingly close in color. I don't think of them that way, but they are. I don't think of Velvet Fawn as being as pink as it is, but it's actually pretty pink. You can definitely see the brown in it when it's next to this Ellis Foss lipstick, but they're both just nice, easy, kind of brownish or nudish 
pinks. Underneath Pale Coffee, the Creamy Lips, I swatched one of the new Brown ZC lipsticks. I think the shade is called Oatmeal. I'm not entirely sure that that's what it is, but I'll link it below. Clearly, these three colors are up my alley. I have shades like them already. I like to wear this sort of thing. And I wasn't displeased by any of them, although I was a little bit surprised that the Creamy Lips and the Milky Lips ended up being so much more saturated in color than they looked in the pictures. It was really exciting when the box arrived. It was fun to open them up. They're very sleek and sexy, these components. They don't take up a lot of space. I appreciate that. They're always making me want to grab them. You know what I mean? They're lying around always, they're always lying around looking alluring. They're fun to play with. I love it when I come across something that is pretty unique to the makeup market packaging wise, but that works. There's a lot that is unique to the makeup market packaging wise, but it, it's a fail because it's like they're choosing to make it unique at the expense of functionality. And in this case, it pretty much works. There are a couple of drawbacks to this kind of packaging and I'll, I'll get to it shortly. I'm gonna go through product by product in the same order. The concealer, it's just off the table. I don't really have anything to say about it except that it's, it's so bad a match for me that I couldn't even use it. The blush, is very beautiful. I know that I was kind of besmirching it when I was showing you the overhead footage, but it blends beautifully. And you might even argue that once it blends out, I'm wearing it today and I'll actually now roll the footage of myself applying it today. And you'll see that when I'm painting it onto my cheeks with the brush, it's really dark and pigmented and it, and it looks very mid-toned. You know what I mean? It, you can just see that peachy color. But then when I blend it out, it shears away to something very natural, like really, really natural looking, maybe even more so than Chouchette and more than a lot of blushes. And I do feel like I've ended up with a blush look today that has the subtlety that I was hoping to get from this blush when I ordered it based on the imagery from the website. So I've been wearing it all the time. I also, I'm surprised by how much I like the mechanism for this for a blush. The twist up tube with the brush tip, painting it on, I'm surprised by how much I like that for a blush. I like that it's hands-free, that I don't have to get product on my fingers or put a brush, like a makeup brush or a sponge, into product. I like that. I like just, I feel like it's very effective just to paint it onto my face and then go in with a brush to blend it out. To me, it feels like the least fussy and the most elegant way to apply a cream or liquid blush. I liked the same quality in the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Spotlight Wand when I was using it. There's just something about my personal workflow with makeup that makes this, this kind of packaging work particularly well for a cheek product. It has that lovely quality of pigment where it's not frustratingly sheer, like you don't have to work and work and work to get color, but it shears out enough and it becomes subtle enough no matter how much you put on the first time that it's hard to go overboard. But if you want to, you can build it to be really, really intense. And I think that that quality that I just described about the blush is possibly one of Ellis Foss's greatest strengths. Every product has that quality that quality of manipula manipulability. You can get it to do exactly what you want. And I think that that comes from the balance of the formula, the finish, and the level of pigment. It's tinkering with those dials until they're perfect that I think Ellis Foss was a genius at just based on having used this makeup. And I'm sure that that came from her genius as a makeup artist and her experience as a makeup artist. So even though it's color that really sold this brand to me initially, it's actually the formula and the relationship between finish, pigment, and texture that has sold me on the blush and kept it in rotation in my life. And I found myself using it by default a lot. I'm just, I'm using it all the time just because it's easy and it's foolproof and it goes with everything. The other blush colors are also really beautiful. There's one called Soft Bronze and there's one called Mold Wine. I kind of wish I had picked one of those because in terms of undertones, I like them better. I picked the one that I picked because it looked so incredibly pale 
in the imagery, and I'm always looking for that, the palest of liquid blushes, you know? This didn't turn out to be that. Uh, so yeah, the other ones are pretty tempting, but in spite of the fact that I use this one so often, I can't really see myself going back to purchase more of these blushes, at least not anytime soon. For me, it's the lip products that really stood out from this brand. They are, I think I've already said this, they're like the, the heart of the brand to me. When I think about potentially using more Ellis Foss makeup or going back to buy some more Ellis Foss makeup, I only see the lips. It's, it's just, it's the lips for me all the way. So let's move on to talking about the lips. Today, before I finished this makeup look, I applied all three of the lip products. I'm currently wearing Milky Lips, the Nudie Pink, because it's the one that I applied third. But I'm gonna talk you through in, in the order in which I applied them for demonstration purposes this morning. So the first one is Glazed Lips the rusty orange. It is so beautiful, y'all. It's not sticky. It applies really easily. I like applying a gloss with a brush tip like this. It feels precise. It feels like artistry rather than like something that I used to do in middle school, which is how applying lip gloss usually feels, to be perfectly frank. And you know, the formula is impeccable. It's not sticky. It's not too bulky and drippy. It has absolutely no scent or flavor. You just don't think about it. I feel like with a lot of lip glosses, it's like they make you think about them. You know, like they taste some kind of way, smell some kind of way. The doe foot applicator is like making itself known right in your face in some kind of way. And you're like, ah, 10 o'clock and new o'clock. But this, it's just, it's very elegant. It does its job in that it looks perfect and it feels comfortable on the lips and it's enjoyable to apply and it's easy to manipulate. Again, it's that balance of like formula and saturation. It just performs and it doesn't make a big deal about it. Just no fuss at all. And then the color is to me one of a kind. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. I'm so happy that I picked the color that I picked for glazed lips. So I applied it in a pretty thick layer in the B-roll footage and showed that to you. And then I blotted it pretty heavily onto the back of my hand, partly so that you can see what the product looks like as a lip imprint on the hand, because I feel like that can actually tell you something visually about the consistency and sheerness of a product. But I also wanted you to see how it would look on my lips after it had been worn for hours and hours and hours. I have actually worn that lip gloss a lot. Of these three products, these three lip products, I think it's the one that I've worn the most. And it wears away beautifully. It ends up just looking like an ever so slight glossy stain on the lips after it's worn down. Next I applied Creamy Lips, the pale coffee color with the sponge tip applicator. And again, I was wrong. This one is actually the full pigment lipstick formula, the most traditional lipstick. I love this color. Again, it's a little bit deeper and even has a touch more orange in it than I expected it to, but it doesn't read like a super orange brown. I was worried that it would when I first swatched it, but it's like just a hair short of that. It really works as a neutral. It applies really easily, same as the other one, no scent. It's very, very thin, especially for how creamy it is. It doesn't make a big deal out of itself. The sponge tip applicator makes it really easy to control. It sets pretty well, you know? It's, it's like not sliding all over the place getting outside of the lip line, but it's also not super matte. It's just casually, subtly, effortlessly the perfect version of itself. And again with this, I blotted it on the back of my hand so you could see what the lip imprint looked like on my hand, and you could see how a, a blotted version of the pigment looked on my lips. Pretty good. I haven't worn this one as much over the course of the month or so that I've had these products, mostly because it's a stronger lip. And when I'm testing makeup, a lot of times I put on a bunch of eye makeup and then I get to the lip part and I want something easier and more subtle. That's why I tend to reach for glosses a lot. But objectively, this is probably my favorite of the three formulas. And it's partly because of the applicator, but it's also because it's high pigment, but it's really, really thin. So you can manipulate 
shade it so easily. You can sheer it out. And it does say on the website, Ellis designed the shade so that each lipstick can be used in multiple ways, from fully applicated lips to a subtle stain and any transparency in between. I love products that are like this, especially when they're fully pigmented, because then you have the full spectrum of possibility. And this, as the most pigmented one, is the one that gives you the most flexibility, the most possibilities. And I just like that. I like having that control. However, I will say I've been using these products now for a month and I was mixed up about which one is the milky lips and which one is the creamy lips. And I think that that's just a testament to how flexible they both are. You can get pretty good coverage with either creamy lips or milky lips, and you can get pretty elegant, soft, sheer, natural coverage with either one. So the difference kind of ends up being not the level of pigment, but the finish. And creamy lips has a more satin in between finish, whereas Milky Lips has a little bit shinier of a finish, just a little bit glossier of the finish. And for that reason, to me, it ended up feeling a little bit goopier and a little bit harder to control. That's the one that I am wearing now. I'll now show you the footage of myself applying it. I, it's also the applicator with this one. This is a little bit faulty, just the one that I have, the applicator is a little faulty. I feel like I always have to turn it and turn it and turn it to get it to come out. Everything else, it seems like the, the product is always right under the surface. And if I just turn the clicker once or twice, it comes through and it's no problem. But with this one, it's like I turn it and nothing comes out. I turn it and nothing comes out. And I have to turn it, turn it, turn it a bunch of times. And then all of a sudden a whole bunch of it comes flooding out. Then I have to put it on my hand. It's so pigmented that I only need a little bit of it. And so then I end up wasting a bunch of product and it feels just like it's kind of goopy and getting everywhere. So with this one, I would have liked this formula to be in the sponge tip and not the brush tip applicator. I think it would have been easier to for me to work with it. But it's also, it's not, I wouldn't say that it's like semi-pigmented or semi-sheer. It's pigmented. And you'll see when I apply it that it's full coverage. And even when I blot it down, quite a lot of pigment stays behind. I've had it on now for like a couple of hours it has become quite a natural part of my look and really melted into my lips. But I feel like I still look like I'm wearing lipstick. And to me, it still feels like a pretty strong presence of pigment on the lips. So it's definitely not a stand-in for the Glossier Vanillic lip. Pigment-wise, if any of the three are, it's glazed lips, actually. The gloss. So this is billed as being slightly transparent. It's only slightly transparent right? It just, it doesn't feel palpably more transparent than creamy lips to me. But it is everything, everything I said about the other two formulas is true about it in terms of ease of use. It is a totally perfect version of itself. It's just incredibly easy to work with. Even the brush, though I like the sponge tip better, I'm always surprised by how unmessy the application is when I'm applying any of these three lip products. And then once it's on, I never worry about it. The color is pretty, a little bit less, again, exciting or original than I was hoping that it would be, but really pretty. It's the kind of foolproof formula and easy to wear color that I would expect to see from a makeup artist, like a, a truly incredible makeup artist who took everything that she knew about makeup and applied it to the formulation of an ever so slightly transparent, versatile, creamy, easy to wear lipstick. So I had big plans to tell you specifically about my experience opening these products and swatching them for the first time as its own segment of the video and then to go on and tell you about how my relationship with them has been over time or has changed over time. But in fact, I just told you about it all at once. I feel like it, this is like a true story time. Like we were just hanging out together. And I was like, just, it's like we're, we're having coffee and you're like, how to go with you and Ellis Foss? I've got an hour. <laughs> I just started talking. But let me give you my final thoughts. I have taken some notes. So final thought number one, it's all about lips with this brand for me. And this is me as a consumer, not a makeup artist, a, a consumer and a reviewer right? But really just me as a, someone who likes to use makeup on her own face. To me, this brand is all about those lip products. They are so alluring. And what's good in the brand is magnificent. I feel like what's good is the lip products. I think the other products are good too, but I'm kind of talking about like the standard for me is that feeling of excitement and specialness and the feeling that 
that's different and that it's exquisite that I had all those times when I was looking at the website and thinking that I wanted to try the products, right? Even though the blush is great and probably actually my most used of the five of these is the blush, even though that's true, it's the lip products that really lived up to the expectation that I had formed for the brand based on what I had read and seen. I think that there's a lot about this brand that's specifically for makeup artists who are gonna be mixing colors every time they do anyone's makeup. If a makeup artist were coming to do my makeup with a bunch of Ellis Voss products, I'm assuming it wouldn't be too much of a, an issue that my skin is lighter than the lightest shade of concealer because makeup artists are always like mixing stuff, right? So the makeup artist might have like a, a pure white of some kind that they could mix with the concealer to make it work. I think that that is for the most part standard practices with makeup artistry. And it does feel like some of these offerings are specifically being made with that standard in mind. For consumers, for people who just really love makeup and like to buy themselves an interesting piece of makeup from time to time, for consumers looking at this brand to buy makeup for themselves, I would say just look at the lip products because that's this brand and this makeup artist. That's this brand at the height of its specialness and this makeup artist at the height of her powers. Let's talk about the packaging a little bit. I could see there being a little, like an issue, a little bit for some people. One thing is that they all look the same. I know there is this system of color coding and numbers on the bottom. So I have actually been able to tell pretty easily which one is which when I want one of these. They've all just been sitting on my vanity for a couple of months now. It's not hard when I want one to quickly find it. I often have to pick them all up and I look at it like this and then I can easily see. If I'm looking for the blush, I can tell easily because it says S301, S for skin, and the lip products all say L209, L109, L305, and then the colors are actually on there. So I can like pick the orange one if I want the glazed lips or pick the kind of brownie beige one if I want the pale coffee one. So it hasn't been frustrating per se because it is never, the, the fact that these five little things all look exactly the same when they're sitting on my vanity, it hasn't ever really messed me up or slowed me down too much. But if there were more than these five, if there were more than I could easily keep in my makeup mind palace, it might be a little bit difficult. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend someone to go and buy a bunch of stuff from this brand, like two of each of the five, of the four lip formulas, because it just, it would be confusing and it would, I could see somebody being so excited about that them, getting them all and then never using them because you sit down to your makeup and you look at it and you like can't even really remember what, what you have or like which one is which. But I do, I could see it being really cool to have one or two. Like I think that I will probably keep glazed lips, the orange one, which is so special, and the creamy lips and pale coffee, the one with the sponge tip. I think that I'm going to keep these like close to hand. I'll take them with me. I'll throw them in my bag when I go places. I'll keep them on my vanity. I'll be like, like using them a lot. I'll be excited that they're here and it'll be really easy for me to tell the difference between the two of them. They're just being two. It'll be easy for me to keep them in my makeup mind palace. They'll be like my two Ellis Foss lip products and I'll be like, yeah, I love them so much. That's what I could see some of you guys doing, like if you're interested in this brand. And I could see that making sense and being like a successful relationship with these products. Any more than that and it gets a little bit like, ah, it's a little, ah, <laughs> it gets a little bit like that. And I've, I've got a little bit back and forth because of that about whether the the packaging design is successful or not. I think that it might be a case where it's extremely successful for makeup artistry and maybe successful for people trying to sort of build a capsule of makeup just from this brand and they don't use anything else. But it stands out to me here at the end of the whole testing process as one of the most distinctive things about the brand. The way that it's packaged, the way the products are packaged, and what that means in practical terms in the everyday. And hopefully I've given you enough information to be able to tell if it would be a boon to you, if it would work well for you, or if it would be a drawback to you. I will say that the colors, the ones that knocked it out of the park for me really did. Mostly just the orange lip gloss, but I do also really appreciate the brown, the creamy lips, the coffee colored one. I love both of those products and the ones that nailed it really, really nailed it. The colors that were disappointing to me, the two pinks, the pink that I'm wearing on my lips now and the pink of the blush, the formulas still really impressed me. But because I wasn't 
as excited by all of the colors as, as I was expecting to be. My first reaction after I opened these products and started testing them was that I wanted to place another order for different colors because I like the formulas a lot. And I, I felt like I hadn't made the best choices when it had come to color. And that was partly because they're not totally accurately represented on the website. So hopefully this can be a cautionary tale for those of you who have tastes similar to mine, or even if you don't, just know that the shades are pale, at least these ones are more pale on the website. They all just look a little bit more pale and like grungy in that slightly washed out way than they are in real life. I think you can get something close to the colors that you see by blotting them and shearing them out, but they don't swatch straight, most of them don't swatch straight out of the component the way that they look in the pictures. But what I'm trying to get at when I say that is that the feeling I had when I was like, ooh, these colors, the, the pinks aren't quite what I thought they would be. I wasn't like, and then, and therefore I feel like this brand like has promised something and not delivered. It didn't make me feel that way. It made me feel like I wanted another try. I wanted to try again because there are so many colors that look so special and different that I still want to try. So I could see myself going back in the future and maybe picking up like an, another Creamy Lips, the one with the sponge tip applicator. I could see myself doing that maybe in the far future. It's not something that I'm like desperate to do right now. It's not like I'm so desperately obsessed with them that I need one in every color, you know? But I could see myself doing that and I could also see myself at some point trying Ellis Red just to see what all of the fuss is about. I bet that Ellis Red in the Creamy Lips formula is really amazing. I bet that Ellis Red in the Glazed Lips formula is also really amazing. And there are these eyeshadows, these creamy eyes eyeshadows that I didn't even touch. I was just, I just like couldn't, it was too much. It was adding up to too much money because each one is like $30. I would love to try the eyeshadows at some point in the future. The colors look beautiful. And based on the experience that I had with these formulas, I bet that they're really, really well designed. So that is it. I feel like the most valuable experience that I've had with this brand is just learning about Ellis Foss and seeing the imagery and learning about her philosophy and knowing about her as a makeup artist. I feel as inspired by the imagery on the website and the spirit of the thing, or I would actually say more inspired by that than I even do by the actual products, even though the products are really beautiful and the ones that I like I love and I'm going to keep using. Her legacy is bigger than the products, you know? She was an artist and I'm, I'm glad to know about her and to be able to have her way of doing makeup and the, the way she thought about color and the way she thought about skin and eyes and lips and cheeks and faces and texture as art, I'm glad to have that in my mind. I'm glad to have these images as paintings that are hanging on the walls in my makeup mind palace. And of course, especially if you're on a no buy or a low buy, or if these products are on the high end for you in terms of pricing, you don't need to buy them to have that yourself. You can be inspired, especially knowing that not every single color is exactly in person what it looks like on the website, you know? If you're really inspired by the colors on the website, then possibly your best move would be to try to mix it with what you already have because you'll probably get closer to what you see than you could by buying the product because they're all just a little bit different in real life. So it was fun to try these products. And of course I valued the experience and I hope that I was able to offer you either an entertaining video or some valuable information if you're looking to buy something from this brand or maybe both. But it's been so much more enjoyable to me to get to know Ellis Foss than just testing makeup and learning about colors and formulas has the capacity to be. It's not really the makeup that makes it art, you know, it's what you do with it. And I feel like the brand, the whole brand, is kind of a reminder of that. Quick reminder here at the end to subscribe if you're watching and you're not subscribed. I appreciate you all so much for being here and for watching. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 